heavenly hosts. If the celestial creatures in heaven are aware of the impending events in your city, they will remain silent for approximately 30 minutes. Behold, my beloved child of God, I am going to reveal something so terrible that it will rock you to your very foundation. A major development is on the horizon and you may not realize how important it is. Numerous recent events, such as the solar eclipse and earthquakes caused by war in the Holy Land, point to the literal fulfillment of biblical prophecies. From the beginning of the Third Temple in Jerusalem's construction, to the intensifying attacks on Christian bishops and the faithful, leading up to the flesh flare in Bay, every sign is a fulfillment of prophecies recorded in the Holy Bible. Similarly, the most significant prophecy that will occur after all others is almost realized. If you're still confused, my friend Apostle John, who penned the Revelation, has some things to say about what happens in your city after the 11th hour. The book of Revelation describes this incident at the 11th hour. The Apostle John presumably wrote the book between 1895 and 1896, during his exile on the island of Paul. After seeing visions from Jesus Christ, he put pen to paper. John recounts his ordeal in Revelation 1, 10, 11. On the Lord's day, he claims, I was in a mystical state when a trumpet-like voice from behind me commanded me to write down all I saw and transmit it to seven churches. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pagam, and John recorded messages to the seven churches, visions of heaven, judgments, and Christ's final triumph in his letters to Thar, Sis, Philadelphia, and Lyre. John recorded his visions in the Book of Revelation, a book filled with symbolic imagery, predictions, and messages. Today, we have a chapter from that sacred book that will shock you to your core. It's not good. There was utter stillness in heaven when the Lamb split the seventh seal, Revelation 8, 1-6. About 30 minutes later, I saw the seven angels standing before God with the seven trumpets bestowed upon them. A golden censer adorned another celestial being who appeared as he approached the altar. He received a great deal of incense to accompany the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar before the throne. The angel carried the smoke of incense and the prayers of God's people to God. The angel retrieved the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and set it on the ground. Pips of thunder erupted, noises that crackle. When the seven angels who had prepared the trumpet sounded them, there was a sudden bolt of lightning and an earthquake. Did you hear that the entire sky fell silent? The events that followed confirmed the beginning of the end times and altered humanity's trajectory on earth. People will formally begin to experience food shortages in their cities, leading to suffering and starvation. Massive crowds will confront you, along with earthquakes and unusual weather conditions. We will stand together as one, praising God from His throne and the Lamb as the rightful heirs of redemption. Dear child of God, it will be a moving occasion filled with adoration and praise. I can assure you that this is truly the future and that it is getting closer. Therefore, how does it impact us? Everyone can see that we are on the verge of divine judgment and must repent immediately. I have told you before, but you know this too. We all make mistakes in life. What matters is how we deal with them afterwards. Consider our history, which is God's will. We should strive to learn from our mistakes instead of wallowing in self-blame. It is right to ask God for forgiveness if we can't fix our mistakes, but if we can, we should. We should repent and seek God's compassion instead of wallowing in self-pity and sorrow over things we have done wrong, since we know from experience that this is the path to hell. Rather than letting our transgressions define us, God cherishes us as His children. His mercy and generosity are like a new dawn. They give us hope for the day ahead. Because He cares about us, He wants us to get past our feelings of guilt and regret. God welcomes anyone who seeks forgiveness with open arms. According to 1 John 1 9, God is faithful to forgive those who confess their faults to Him. But I tell you what, beloved child of God, God wants us to learn from our failures too. He does not want us to remain immature and stubborn, 
but rather to develop and seek to live in accordance with His will. Consequently, let us not lose sight of God or His purpose for our lives as we go forward. Embrace God's love and forgiveness. Let us forget our sins and go on. We Christians should repent if we see ourselves sinning again. Due to His desire for reconciliation rather than punishment, God extends His hand of forgiveness to us when we repent. He desires our well-being and provides us with chances to ask for His pardon, which ultimately leads to personal growth, happiness, and His physical presence. Love your neighbor as yourself and forgive them are two of Jesus' greatest instructions. The act of forgiving others is a prerequisite to receiving God's forgiveness. It is important to carefully consider the consequences of our actions and avoid seeking vengeance on others for wrongs done to us contradicts the teachings of Jesus and our identity as God's children. Keep in mind, beloved child of God, that the inability to forgive breaks the chain of pain that spreads from one generation to the next. Keeping grudges to yourself will only bring you more pain. Therefore, it's critical to forgive people to stop the pattern. We, the children of God, make a solemn vow to reflect His mercy and grace in everything that we do, therefore restoring broken relationships and bringing about God's kingdom. Never forget that God is aware that when we forgive people, we are indeed we stop seeking retribution by aligning with His will, especially when it comes to people who have harmed us. Put your vengeance aside and forgive now, believers. Do what God wants and let Him judge those who have harmed you. This includes forgiving them right away and asking for His pardon wholeheartedly when you mess up. Forgive yourself from above. Let go of the past that is holding you back from fulfilling God's plan and let go of any thoughts of retribution, shame, guilt or anguish you may have. Affirm the power of God's reconciliation. Let us put aside our transgressions and look forward to making amends in the future. If we do this, we will be able to stand before God's kingdom with pleasure and contentment, not shame. To achieve that goal, we must turn from our sins and devote ourselves fully to praying to God. Therefore, O kind Father, repeat this prayer now with all your trust. Thank you for being a part of my life. I am amazed and grateful to stand before you now. There are signs and wonders, and I see them. Through your words, you have shown me your power and love, and it has humbled me. As I join the multitude bowing before your throne in adoration, I declare that salvation is yours, her God, who rules from on high, and that you are the Father of the Lamb. The thirty minutes of quiet in paradise have served as a reminder of the utmost respect and awe I should feel when I am in your presence. May I humbly beg for your assistance in approaching your throne before you recognize you as the whole globe's holy church. With full humility, and awareness of the gravity of the moment, I beg you, Lord, to guide me with your wisdom and discernment in these troubled times. Father, I beg you by your grace to be disheartened enough to see the signs of the times and strong enough to remain faithful despite them. At this time and in the days ahead, I beg that you watch after my family and myself. God, keep us safe from the devil's plans and defend us from all evil. Arrange your celestial host around us and station your guardian angel around us for our protection, our guardian patriarch. When I pray, I ask that you save those who do not yet know you, that you will open their hearts to accept your love and forgiveness, and that you will bring them into a relationship with you. Knowing that you are trustworthy and will keep your word, I put my life in your hands, Lord. I pray that you will accomplish your will in my life and around the globe. Pray that you will empower me to follow your word and bring glory to your name through my life. Please accept my gratitude for your unfaltering love and for listening to my prayers. Stands the test of time, just as it is in heaven, I pray that your kingdom will come to earth. Let it be so, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.